Hello everyone. This is Dr. R. Sasikmar, Professor, Computer Science and Engineering Department from RMD Engineering College. Today, I'm going to take about an instruction fetch and execution step in computer architecture. So generally, there are three types of instruction format available. So the namely called, uh, one is called uh, R format, another one is uh, I format, the third one is called what, J format. The R format, uh, which is uh, most suitable for arithmetic and logic instruction. And I format is most suitable for uh, uh, memory operation instruction, uh, then uh, immediate value instruction, then branch equal instruction also. And R J format is nothing but part only suitable for uh, uh, unconditional control statement. Here, the R format instruction, that is a register operand format, uh, totally 32 bit register from 0 to 31, totally 32 bit register, 0 to 16. The first 16 bits will be allocated for upcode of the given instruction. The next uh, uh, 17 to 21, next 5 bits, uh, first 16 bits will be allocated for upcode. The next 5 bits will be allocated for destination. The another 5 bits will be allocated for source uh, operand 1, 2. The last 5 bits will be allocated for source operand 1. Okay. So uh, this R format is most suitable for R for uh, arithmetic operation and uh, logical operation. So two source operand, uh, one destination operand. So the uh, then opcode, opcode will be allocated 16 bits, uh, 0 to 16. Uh, then the next five bits uh, will be allocated for destination, another five bits for source two, then last five bits will be allocated for source one. Okay, the next one is the immediate operand, uh, uh, that is I format instruction. Uh, out of 32 bit, uh, the first uh, 0 to 5, that is a 6 bits will be allocated for opcode. Uh, the next uh, 6 to 21, immediate operand. Here, immediate operand, uh, either constant value or address, address of the operand. In, in case of load instruction or store instruction, we have to specify the address. Okay, so that address will be uh, comes under that immediate operand. In case some example, add immediate or subtract immediate, that is a constant value will be applicable. That value also uh, comes under that uh, the bit number 6 to 21. The next from bit number 22 to 26, uh, the next five bits for destination, the another five bits for source operand. Okay. And the last one is for call format. This is unconditional control statement. Out of 32 bit, uh, the first uh, 0 to 5 bits called what opcode. Uh, the next step from starting from 6 to 31 is called what immediate value here the target address we have to specify in that immediate value so the address will be specified so that is a, a format a three format in second r format i format and j format okay so uh, the in second fetch and execution step uh, for uh, uh, add r3 comma r4 comma r5 so for example if you consider this uh, add r3 comma r4 comma r5 uh, there are uh, two source operand. What is called source operand? R4 and R3 is called what source operand? And R3 is called what a destination operand. Okay. Then what are the steps are required to fetch the instruction and execute the instruction? There are five steps are required. The step one, we have to fetch the instruction. Okay. So how to fetch the instruction? Uh, with the help of a, a program counter. So the program counter is a one type of a register. It points the address of the first instruction or address of the next instruction. So it has the address and that address will be supplied to memory address. Okay, so the program counter, content of the program counter will be uh, applied uh, or will be supplied to memory address. Okay, now the control signal which generate the control signal. What is the control signal? We are going to read the instruction from memory. So read control signal. So read memory. After some fraction of time, the memory operation will be completed. So then the instruction will be fetched from that uh, memory and that will be moved to IR via memory data register. So memory data will be transferred to instruction register. Once the current instruction is moved on to instruction register, then the program counter will be incremented by 4 automatically. So uh, here I am telling about that 32-bit uh, architecture. So that's why the program counter will be incremented by 4 automatically. Here one question will, uh, will arise. When the program counter will be incremented mid part, whenever the current instruction is move on to IR, automatically the program counter points the address of the next instruction. So obviously that will be incremented by 4 automatically. Then what is the role of instruction register? 
that memory basic operational concept that I have given already in that uh, uh, one topic, uh, basic operational concept. Okay. So uh, now the current instruction is available in IR. Okay. Uh, what is uh, uh, IR? What is the role of IR means what? That IR, which is going to analyze and decode the instruction. What type of instruction is currently available and how many operands are available? So now after analyze, then the system knows this is an add instruction. It has a three operand, one so one destination operand and two source operand. So now we are ready to fetch the data from that memory. Source operand is R4 and R5. So the content of R4 is transferred to RA. The content of R5 is transferred to RB. Okay, now both the values are available in register RA and RB. What is the operation of this instruction? Add instruction. So now the third step is what R is it equal to? Content of RA is added with the content of RB. The result is transferred to RZ. Now that result will be temporarily moved to one register. RZ will be transferred to RY. Then the finally the content of RY is transferred to R3. So this is the way to execute one instruction. So for example, my current instruction is add R3 comma R4 comma R5. Then how to fetch the instruction? Then how to execute the instruction and how to get the data? This is a step. So it is a R format instruction. So the, uh, the uh, compulsory, we have to use a uh, five step, but the fourth step uh, memory is not required. So that's why the data is temporarily transferred into one register. From that register, finally, it will be transferred to R3. The second example, uh, load R3, X of R7. So for um, uh, load instruction, compulsory, we have to use all five steps. For R format instruction, we have to use only four steps, right? Uh, the memory operation is optional, but here the memory instruction that is a load instruction compulsory. We have to use all five steps. Okay, load R5 comma X of uh, R7. So we need to fetch the data from memory. What is the data means? What X of R7? Where it is available? It is available in main memory, not directly available, indirectly available. So the memory address. The step one is what a program counter. The content of the program counter will be moved to memory address and uh, the control signal which is, which is used the control signal read signal so read memory after some fraction of time the memory operation is completed now the instruction is available that instruction will be moved to ir with the help of memory data register again once the instruction is moved on to ir then the program counter will be incremented by four automatically then what is the use of that ir means what to decode the instruction it will analyze uh, how many operand available, how many source operand available, how many destination operand is available, and what type of instruction is currently available. Everything will be analyzed and decoded. Here, the source is what? Uh, R7 registered. So, we need to get the content of R7. That will be transferred to one temporary register, RA. Still, data is not available because uh, that R7, we have to add with uh, some immediate value. What is the immediate value? X of R7. So, the content of RE is added with the immediate value of X, then that will be transferred to one temporary register RZ. Okay. In that RZ, that is not a data. So that is a one location address. Now you have to pass that address to memory. In that address, what data is exactly available, that will be read. So the fourth step, uh, uh, content of RZ is applied to memory address. Then immediately the control unit which generates one control signal, read signal. Now the memory is uh, to be performed by the read operation. After a fraction of a second, memory function is completed. Now the data will be transferred to one temporary register RY. From that RY, the data will be transferred to R5. So for especially for load instruction, all five steps is mandatory. Okay, this is the way to fetch and execution one instruction. And the third example, store, store instruction means what, uh, uh, load instruction means what, we have to fetch the data from memory and store it into register. So memory to register, that is called what is load instruction. But store instruction, we, we have to store, we have a data, but uh, we need to store the data. Where we want to store the data? In a specified location. So I have a data, but I don't want to uh, get the location. So we need to get the location first. In that specified location, the data will be stored. So Store R6, X of R8 means what? The content of R6 will be transferred to 
the location x of r eight. Okay, so the step one, step one is common for all. Okay, uh, program counter which supply address to memory address, then the control unit generate the read signal and memory will be read by the uh, some fraction of second after memory function complete. Uh, that instruction will be moved to IR via MDR. Once once the instruction is moved on to IR, then the program counter will be incremented by four automatically. Now the program counter points the address of the next instruction. So uh, once the current instruction is available in that instruction register, what is the use of that instruction register means what? Uh, it will decode the instruction as well as analyze the instruction. How many operand available? How many source operand and how many destination operand is available? With respect to this example, one source operand, okay, uh, that is a, a R6 is available already. So the content of R6 is temporarily transferred to one temporary register RB. And we need to find out the location first before we move on to data. We need to find out the location where we want to store the data. So how to calculate the specified location means what R8, R8 will be transferred to one temporary register RE. Okay, then RE will be added with one uh, uh, immediate value X. So RE plus immediate value X, you will get one address. That address will be transferred to RZ. Okay and RB will be transferred to RM. Okay, now we have a specified location. We have a data in the specified location. We need to write the data. So now the RZ will be applied to memory address. In that address, I am going to write the data. So the control unit which generates the control signal is called what? Write data, memory data. After memory function complete, then where the data is available? Memory, RM. So in that uh, RM, that will be transferred to memory data and uh, perform the right uh, memory operation. Then finally, what? No action. Okay. So because this is store operation, we need to store the data from register into memory. The fifth step is not required. So for load instruction, five steps are required. For add instruction, four steps are required. For store instruction, again, four steps are required. So here, fifth step is not required. And the last one, uh, instruction from the execution step for conditional branch instruction. Branch if R5 equal to R6, then loop. If the content of R5 is equal to content of R6, then the control will be transferred to some other block of statement, loop statement. So this is what a conditional control statement. So we have to check whether the both operand values are equal or not. If it is equal, control will be transferred to some other block or target address. Otherwise, the next instruction will be executed. Okay, the same concept. The program counter, which is supply address to memory address, then the control unit generates the uh, control signal read memory. After memory function complete, the memory data will be transferred to IR. Once the instruction is moved on to IR, then the program counter will be incremented by four automatically. The second step, the role of IR is something but what to decode the instruction as well as analyze the instruction. Analyze the instruction means what how many operand is available. With respect to this example, we have a two operand. One is R5, another one is R6. So that two operand will be temporarily moved to one temporary register. A uh, content of R5 will be transferred to RE. Content of R6 will be transferred to RB. Now we get, we have a two data. We have to compare whether both data is equal or not. So compare RE to RB. If RE equal to RB, then the program counter uh, address must be updated. What is the new address? That the target address must be updated. So. What is the target address? With respect to this example, loop is a target address. So the program counter is nothing but what? A program counter equal to the program counter address plus the branch offset. The branch offset is nothing but what? A target address. That's all. If the condition is true, the control will be transferred to target address. Otherwise, the next instruction will execute. Here, the step four and step five is not required for branch instruction. So for executing branch instruction, three steps are essential. For executing store instruction, four steps are essential. For executing load instruction, five steps are mandatory. For executing R format instruction, uh, four steps are required. But the fourth step, uh, uh, no action only. The fifth step only content is transferred to the register. So this is the example for uh, how to fetch the instruction and how to execute. Uh, what are the steps are required to execute that instruction? I hope you understand uh, all uh, four different examples. Thank you.